What's going on guys? Welcome to the hotel studio. I'm in Pennsylvania right now on a travel gig and I'm tired. Been up since 2 a.m. LA time and I'm ready to go to bed. But I'm doing this for you guys. The news cycle's too good. Today we are talking Fujifilm X-H2. Not X-H2S, X-H2. Let's get into it. All right, so by now you guys already know I'm shooting on the X-H2S and I have been for a while. I love it. It is one of my favorite cameras I've ever used, and it is a workhorse. It's a beast. It's so good. But why did Fujifilm release a camera without the S badging? What, what does the S even mean? Well, okay. So, on the outside, the Fujifilm X-H2 is identical to the X-H2S, exactly the same body style. The only differentiating factor is it does not have the S badge on the front. Seriously, that's it. Same card slots, same battery, same dials. Everything is exactly the same minus the S. Now what does the S mean? So on the Fujifilm X-H2S, the S stands for speed. Now real quick for a spec roundup if you guys don't know, the X-H2S is a 26 megapixel stacked sensor, can shoot 40 frames per second photos, 1080p 240, 4K 120, and 6.2K open gate, which is nuts. So again, S stands for speed. Speed for photos, speed for video, speed. So. Does that mean the X-H2 is a slow camera? Yes and no. It is not a slow camera as in it's bad, but it is a slower camera. So the X-H2 comes in with a 40 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. Now it is not a stacked sensor. So having a regular sensor that's not stacked means that when you're shooting high frame rates, you might get some warping and wobbling in your shots. So that's where the speed on the X-H2S comes in handy. The X-H2 can also only shoot up to eight frames per second photo, uncropped. <laughs> so it can shoot up to 20 actually, but at 10 frames per second, 15 and 20, you have a 1.2 times crop. So I get it, like you have a 40 megapixel sensor, you're not really losing a ton of resolution, but it's still a crop nonetheless, I don't like that. Now in terms of video, this thing isn't exactly a slouch either. So it can shoot 1080, 120, 4K 60, and up to 8K 30. So you can tell the FPS is pretty much dialed back range, but you can go up to 8K. So if resolution is the name of your game, the X-H2 is a much better option. Now does that mean that the 26 megapixel sensor on the X-H2S isn't enough? No. Now check out this image. I took this in Yosemite National Park over the weekend and you can really punch into this image and see some serious detail. This is a 26 megapixel image. Obviously you're gonna get something even more insanely detailed on the 40 megapixel camera, but you can tell that 26 megapixels is perfectly fine. So some similarities that actually cross over is both cameras for video can shoot RAW and Blackmagic RAW externally. Now one thing that the X-H2S has over the X-H2 is the open gate format for 6K. So if you guys don't know, open gate is pretty much an entire sensor readout, whereas any other video format, you get a crop. So that means if you're using anamorphic lenses, you get a true anamorphic value. And if you want to crop vertically, because apparently that's the thing now, thanks TikTok and Reels, <laughs> I'm not a fan, but that's where the industry is going. So it is what it is. I don't like it, but you can crop in vertically with much more room from top to bottom. So that is a welcome addition if you're doing vertical content. So some other minor differences is X-H2 drops its base ISO from 160 to 125. Not a massive difference, but you should know. Lastly is price. So if you are on a budget, the X-H2 is gonna be your better camera. It comes in at $19.99, whereas the X-H2S comes in at $24.99. So honestly, it's super great to see Fuji bring their flagship camera to a sub $2,000 price bracket. This just opens up the barrier of entry to way more consumers. So the burning question is, what camera should you get? Well, it kind of depends on what you do. If you do fast action sports, or you like that buttery smooth B-roll in your video, then the X-H2S is gonna be your better option. But if you maybe shoot landscape photography or high detail fashion photography and need the megapixels, the X-H2 is a really good buy. It's probably the camera for you or if you wanna crop in your video from 8K, which whatever, do what you wanna do with your video, that's your option too. But on the X-H2S, you still have 6K, which is way more than enough. So honestly, it comes down to personal preference, what you shoot, what's better for you. However, in some weird scenario, I can actually see myself owning both cameras, 
Not at this very moment. There's no way. But I could totally see myself having my Fujifilm X-H2S as my dedicated video camera just because that fits the bill for video way better for me. Then, mounted with a different lens is the X-H2 as my dedicated photo camera. Again, everything I need to do can happen on this camera and my X-E4 currently, but as I continue my career, I could maybe see that being a possibility, having one for each scenario. Because these cameras are made for different things. They might be the same camera at face value, but they're made for different people. So honestly, whatever camera you choose is gonna be an incredible value and neither of them limit you because Fuji seriously throws everything at the wall and just lets it stick for you to choose what you wanna pick, which is an incredible option that not many manufacturers give you. Really, there's no limitations on any of these cameras. It's just what feature set you wanna pick. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I don't look too tired and drugged down. I've been up for, I don't even know how long at this point. <laughs> And then I gotta go shoot photos tomorrow and then get back on a plane and get home at like 1 a.m. That's besides the point. I did this for you guys. Hope I educated you guys a little bit on the Fuji Film madness. I am super excited with Fuji Film and where they're going as a company. It's just mind blowing. The community is awesome. The cameras are awesome. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for bearing with me in this crazy process. Till next time, peace.